just want to share something for just a moment because I feel like God is saying that there's some people in this room today and maybe watching online that you're going through something and you can't see how God's going to pull you out of it. But you need to be reminded of the song we just sung comes right from the scripture, Romans 8, 28, that God says he works all things, everyone say all things, together for those who love him, for the good and purposes of those who love him. And maybe you're going through a hard time right now, and I just would love for you to close your eyes and bow your heads. Maybe you're watching online and you're going through something and, and hope is dwindling in your life. And if that's where you are, then I would like to just slowly sing this chorus, declaring that our God is a God who brings beauty from ashes. Our God is a God who brings joy from mourning. And no matter what we're going through, that he can work it all out because he works all things for good. So let's sing this chorus, but let's make it our prayer of faith today, that God will work it out, that he's gonna make all things work together for your future and for your good because you love him. Let's sing that one more time as our prayer. Make all things work together for my future and for my good. You make all things work together.
sure enjoying your presence and we hate to move along but we have to in this moment but we sure love you and we praise you we're so thankful that you are God our Savior you love us and you live and you're at the right hand of the Father and we can trust you and in such a season of turmoil and uncertainty we know and we declare that our God is still on the throne and because of that we have peace Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you air high five somebody or fist bump someone? Welcome them to Bridge to Life Church, the presence of the Lord, and have a seat as we move forward. We have a couple of uh, guest speakers today, in a sense, but they're not guests, they're family. Uh, but we are sticking in line with our Be the Church series. Uh, and we talked about servant leadership last week. And uh, with our servant leadership, we're doing leadership development. And a few months ago when COVID hit, these two were scheduled to speak. Um, a couple of our worship leaders were scheduled to speak half sermons each. So if you guys are lucky, you'll get half sermon each out of them rather than a whole sermon from me, which can be rather painfully long at times. I'm watching. You guys aren't supposed to laugh at that. But we do have Diane and Nick sharing today. There are a couple of our worship leaders. Diane leads worship at the 9 a.m. service uh, a lot of Sundays. Uh, along with Gary and the team, and she has an awesome word, and then Nick's going to share a half a sermon also, which is awesome. And so I was blessed to hear them both this morning. You'll be blessed to hear them, but would you welcome them as they come up and share their message? Diane's first. <laughs> and get ready for the PowerPoint slides and get the close-up on Vader. Yes. Good uh, point there that you made. So thank you, Diane. Morning, Bridge. So, so grateful to be here this morning. Um, my name is Diane. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, yeah, I show up at the earlier service. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I've been coming here to Bridge now for the past several years, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it was just like coming home. And so I am so blessed and honored uh, to be able to share with you all this morning. Over the years, God has really started laying some things on my heart and um, showing me some things about relationships and about worship and and what it means to live a life of worship and in today's world with all the chaos going on i think that's even more important than ever that that we have that lifestyle that that our worship is such an integral part of our being that we are able to move out into the world and do what God has called us to do. And we know that we are coming from a place of love and security and safety. Um, <clears throat> the main scripture that I'm using here is uh, John 4, 23. Jesus said the time is coming. Indeed, the time has come. The true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. They are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Now, there is, um, there's a lot in the Bible about worship and praise. Um, one of the scriptures that God took me to was Psalms 145. Just the first couple verses, and then I'll skip to the end. It says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. I also found a scripture, Nehemiah 9. Um, 
starting in verse 5, says, Stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. In Revelation, it also talks about the worship that is ongoing in heaven. And it says, around the throne of God, the four living creatures, day and night, never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And the 24 elders fall down before him, and they worship him, saying, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. In Revelations 5, in verse 12, it's saying that, that the voices of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000 and circling the throne and the living creatures and the elders and in a loud voice saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. And all of the creatures in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Church, that's what we're called to do. The definition of worship is a feeling or expression of love. It's to show reverence or adoration. It is an extreme form of love. I love that extreme form of love. Worship is an attitude of the heart. Praise is offering thanksgiving, exaltation for something that God has done. When we praise a child for, for an accomplishment, that's, that's saying we love what you did. But worship is just for who he is. We see this teeny tiny person and I know that the love you have for her is overwhelming at times. And I know how I felt when I held my kids and I would just well up and there was nowhere for the love to go and I would just cry. Not because of anything they did, just because of who they are. In uh, 2011, I adopted a four-legged, hairy baby with a tail. His name is Vader, like Star Wars. Um, so yes, we geek out at my house. My daughter picked the name, by the way. Um, when he was little, she said he was the dark side. Um, but he's the sweetest. He's the best little guy. And you know, one of the things that he always enjoyed doing was um, he's the self-proclaimed um, love ambassador. He is the official greeter where I live. If we see people when we're out for our walk, he goes up to say hello. Um, he enjoys if on a Sunday morning, if I don't have to be at church early, he likes to hang out on the front porch steps as the people are coming into the church across the road from my house and just give them love. Hello. Hi. You know, that's his thing. So as I'm watching him, I was out with him the one day and I was talking with a friend of mine and she said, oh, he watches you. He's just watching you so intently. And it's like he understands what you're saying or he's trying to. And I look down at him and he's looking at me with this face. I call that the face of love because I see that all the time. And he watches what I'm doing. He, he's just paying attention. And when I talk to him directly, he can just see him leaning in and, and the gaze gets a little bit more intense and the ears perk up. She's talking. And I really started to think as I'm watching this. And God showed me, this is what it looks like. This is love. This is what our worship is supposed to look like. Whenever we have a worship, work, a, a lifestyle of worship, that means we are living a life of love. Whenever I'm walking with this little guy, he's off leash. So he can do his own thing. You know those dirt roads, how you have the rut on one's each side and the grassy piece in the middle? Be walking along, 
in the rutted road, and I noticed he would turn and look. And I would be in this one, and he would move from the path he was on so that he was in the same one I was in because he wanted his footsteps perfectly aligned with mine. He was not content to just be on the same road. He needed to be in the path that I was walking because he knew that was the right path. There were times that when he was a puppy, he'd get sidetracked. He got lost once. He wasn't paying attention. I kept walking and I realized he's gone. We backtracked, we found him. He plunked his little bottom right there, the last place he had seen us, and he didn't move until we found him, brought him back down, and when he saw me and he heard my voice, he came running to me. There was another time um, he crashed a party, some bunch of little kids. Uh, he does that a lot at the church by my house, and he's in there and he's milling about, running with them. Well, it, it just got to be too much. You know, he was just being overwhelmed, and he started to get scared. I knew where he was, but he couldn't see me. And I could see them look and frantic, and he's looking around, and he just stopped. And I said, Vader, I'm here. Vader, Vader, Mama's here. Eventually, he heard that voice cutting through all of the noise, and he turned, and he saw me. And as soon as he saw me... You could just see the relief coming over him. And he took a step, and I walked towards him, and he immediately pressed himself against my leg, and he stayed there for the rest of the time because I was his comfort. That was his safe place. There's a constant desire for my presence with this little guy, the desperation. When I walk through the door, he's just so happy to see me. And it got me thinking... When someone that I love comes through the door, do they know how much I love them? I was going to share earlier, and I forgot. My daughter was on an internship in Washington, D.C. whenever she was a senior in college. I didn't see her for several months. I went down to visit her and got to the apartment. I wasn't sure exactly where I was going. We had been on the phone. She was directing me where. I parked my car, and I got out, and I'm standing there thinking, I don't know where to go, and I just heard, Mama! And I turned around, and there's my daughter. And she ran towards me and threw herself into my arms. Can you hit the next slide, please? This is the one that always makes me think of the 23rd Psalm. To paraphrase, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack for nothing. He takes me and places and gives me rest. Even when I'm walking in the dark places and I know danger is all around me, I'm not afraid because you're with me. Your staff, that's a comfort because that is my protection. You use that to fend off the evil, the dangers that come against me. I know that when I'm with you, I'm safe. The love that this little guy shows is an example. It's a boundless enthusiasm. It is a love that is uninhibited, unwavering, unapologetic, unfathomable, unfailing, unbreakable, unparalleled, undignified, and unconditional. John 4:23. We will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's the kind of love that God wants from us because that's the kind of love that God has for us. You know, I, I read a while ago um, the babies in uh, the Eastern Bloc countries, in Russia, Ukraine, places like this, they have frequently what's called reactive attachment disorder, or RAD. Part of the reason, oh, that one, part of the reason for that is there's no eye contact with those babies. There's no one to hold and cuddle those babies. I don't know if you can see it, but in this picture, you can see my reflection in his eyes. 
And that got me thinking. He's looking at me. I'm his focal point. He knows there's other things out there, but he's watching me. The movie Avatar, years ago, the indigenous characters, they had a, a way of greeting one another and said, I see you. And they weren't talking about the physical, looking at you, seeing you. They were talking about that deep knowing that I see your soul. I see your heart. I see your value, your worth. It's an exchange on a visceral level. That is the type of exchange we need to have in a life of love and to live a life of worship, to be able to see other people through the reflection of Jesus Christ in our eyes. So when people look at you, do they see Christ reflected in your eyes? Or do they see judgment? Do they see love? When you look at people through the reflection of Jesus in your eyes, you are able to look at them and at the world with love. We should grieve the loss of people who have lived a life of evil deeds. People that are, are steeped in cruelty and hatred. We should grieve their loss because that means that is a life that is forever separated. That soul is forever separated from the love of the Father. And we should grieve because that is what love is. Love is the desire to bring as many people as we can into the love of Jesus Christ. So Jesus said that true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What is truth? Truth is that Jesus was born. He lived a life of sacrifice. He was betrayed. He was crucified and died a torturous, agonizing death. He was buried. He rose on the third day. He ascended, ascended to the right hand of the Father. And he will return and he will gather his beloved to him. That is truth. That is love. That is what it looks like. That is uninhibited, unwavering, unapologetic, unfathomable unfailing, unbreakable, unparalleled, undignified, and unconditional. That is the type of love that Jesus has for me, for you, for you, for all of us, that he was willing to do that. Dr. Henry Cloud is a Christian author, and he said, God just wants to spend time with us. If he went through all of the trouble to come to this earth to die for us, then there has to be a deep hunger, a passion behind that. Our worship is a response to the overwhelming, passionate love of Jesus Christ. He's waiting for us to just show up, to just sit at his feet, breathe in his presence, and love him. Not asking for anything, just Breathe. Rest in his arms. That's worship. That's love. That's what we are called to do. So that's what love looks like. So I ask you, what does your worship look like? Father God, we love you. We praise your name. We give you glory because you alone are worthy. My Redeemer lives. I give you all that I have. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Give her a hand here, guys. So this is a little different for me. So, and I'm I'm definitely stepping out of my comfort zone today. So, uh, but I know what God had has prepared me to talk about today 
I hope you can use in your, your everyday lives. So first off, let's give Pastor Chris a hand. He just really, in all the guest speakers that came in to teach us how to be the church, we do have a great teacher, don't we? Thanks, Pastor Chris. So anyway, for everyone watching online, my name is Nick Grumbling. I'm the worship leader here at Bridge to Life Church, and uh, my wife and I are definitely blessed to, to definitely be here. So. so first and foremost, I am a millennial. <laughs> Just so every, everyone knows that. So this message is for everyone, but I'm talking to all you younger people. And the reason why I say that is because eventually the older generations are going to pass. And then we're, we're the ones that step up to the plate. So I think right now we need to start right now. And uh, hopefully what I have to say and what I'm preaching on today uh, will get through and help us be that generation that changes So the title of my message this morning is Start Right Here, and you'll see why here in a couple minutes. But if you guys can, open up your Bibles to 2 Chronicles 7, 12 through 15. I'll give you guys a second. No, 2 Chronicles 7, 12 through 15. But before I read those verses, I just want to give a little bit of perspective uh, backtrack a little bit so uh, it doesn't sound too confusing. But so, um, so Solomon, he's the son of David in a city called Gibeon. And Solomon reminds me of the prayer war warriors, the ones that sit like in the corner here, and they pray over the service. And their job is to pray before, during, and after each service. And that's truly amazing. I mean, how many of us can really say that we, we pray all day long. I think sometimes I personally forget to, and that's one thing that I need to work on. But it is so awesome to, to actually have that, because it almost builds that covering for us, doesn't it? Kind of builds that protection over our service. So, um, so anyway, moving on. So Solomon is preparing a, to build a temple. And it sounds absolutely gorgeous. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to close your eyes and just picture building this temple. Picture a huge building with gold, silver, bronze, iron. And let's add some color in there. Let's add crimson and some blue. What do you see? Do you see this massive building that's just like absolutely beautiful? Now, I'm not going to stop there because I want to kind of focus on the smell because this is what Solomon is preaching on or he, what he's saying in, in uh, Second Chronicles. Imagine the smell of cedar and cypress and algum timber. I have no clue what algum timber is, but we'll just say that it's amazing. <laughs> you guys can open your eyes now. But doesn't that just sound so beautiful? I just picture from morning to evening, it just completely glorifies and shines the whole way over as if there was a, a, a piece of heaven just came down to earth. So in chapter 5, they bring the Ark Covenant into the temple, and once everything was completed in the temple, all the people got together, and in verse 13, I really want to read this because it sounds like they're having a worship night. And it was the duty of the trumpeteers and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised, the trumpets and the cymbals and the other mu musical instruments in praise to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Now, I want to stop right there. 
I just picture this vapor. I feel like the Holy Spirit, even this morning, I don't feel like this morning it was just like, you know, kind of like Oprah, like, oh, you get the Holy Spirit. Oh, you get the Holy Spirit. (laughs) But I feel like what happened was God was creating that cloud to cover everyone with the Holy Spirit. And that cloud that cloud is what I feel like we were experiencing today. From there, Solomon continues to pray, and it kind of sounds like what we should be doing as a church is basically heal our land, praying to heal what is wrong in our land. To the younger generations and the older generations, there's three important things you must do in your life. I'm 28, and it took me two years ago to figure this out. Number one, Accept Jesus into your life. That will literally save you. And it will literally save you, save your life and give you peace. Personally, in my life, I've seen darkness and shame, impure thoughts, so much self-doubt. But after I accepted Jesus, my perspective started to change. My darkness was turning into light. Instead of shame, I felt grace. Instead of impure thoughts, I was thinking on what all was holy and good. My self-doubts turned into promises. And I started here at church, with a church, not this church. And the church I'm talking about is us as a church. That's where it starts. That's where my life changed whenever I accepted Jesus. Number two is read your Bible. That took me forever to learn that too. We have the answer book to every test and trial. Like, I remember going through high school and I'm just like, hey, what's the answers? And God's just like, here you go. Like, But if you're having a bad day, just open up your Bible and read, read in the Bible what happens where God changed something bad into something good. If you read about Job, Job went through a complete mess. But yet, look what happens at the end. Number three is pray, 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 pray. I say that so many times because in our prayer life, that's what we need to run to and what we need to do daily because we won't see results in the things we want to change in our life if we don't ask for the things that we need dealt with in our lives first. Because God hears us, even when we think he doesn't hear us. So let's go back to verse 2, or that verse in uh, 2 Chronicles. And I'm going to read a little bit before that. Starting at verse 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer. And have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. What I'm hearing God say there is, I hear you. Come on. Tell me what is going wrong in your life. Let me let me listen. Verse 13 says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land 
or send pestilence among my people? What I'm hearing there is whatever you're going through, maybe you're going through a difficult time in your life. Maybe all it feels like is rain and it just feels like a storm's going through and it's never going to stop. But I love verse 14. Because he says, but if, if my people, and that's us, his people, called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. But if we pray, that sounds so simple, doesn't it? It says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be, in, may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. When it gets hard, pray about that marriage. When it gets hard, pray about that situation you're going through or pray about that job that you're trying to find. What I'm hearing the Lord say today is worship and pray to me. That's where you and I need to start. Just pray and worship and keep it simple. It starts with our God. So as we wrap up, I'm going to be a little awkward and grab my guitar because I'm the worship leader. <laughs> Give me one second. That was painless. Okay. So... What I want to do to end is that's what I want us to do is I just want us to pray and I want us to worship. And for the people online, and I'm looking straight into the camera, <laughs> if you're listening right now, worship with us. And type praying hands or type praying or worshiping or Type both. Do the little, like, prayer symbol. But I challenge you this morning. Take every distraction away from you. While you're watching this, while we're worshiping, just open your hands and just focus on Jesus. So if you guys will stand with me, if you guys need to come to the altar, it's been a long time since that has ever happened. I do want to open these up. If you feel safer standing at your seat, that is perfectly fine. But take every distraction away. Just focus on Jesus right now.
the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. In evidence is all.
What an awesome morning. What a great experience I think we've all had together, just experiencing God's presence, hearing a great word. And we'd like to thank Diane for her great word. Dini, thank you for your good word. Vader, thanks for the object lesson. And for Nick sharing about worship and then leading us into the worship of the Lord. Thank you, Nick, for such a powerful word. The only thing I think we missed, um, you know, and then also just congratulations. I wanted to say to Jerrica and Ryan and your family, to Lori. And um, the only thing I think we missed out of the experience was, if you all know, Jay is singing for his first time. And, and whenever Dini was saying, just breathe, I swore Eddie Vedder was about to bust out in Just Breathe by Pearl Jam, but he never did. I was waiting for it. It never happened, but my dog was bringing it today. And boy, we love you guys. It's so good to be family like we are. But God bless you, everybody. We'll see you next week as we start a new series called How to Deal. Not deal, how to deal with the stuff you're going through. So I'm going to teach you a lot about temptation and hearing the voice of God and all that stuff. So hopefully we'll see you same time, same place next week. God bless you, everybody. So much for checking us out if you want more information about bridge to life church check us out on the web anytime and uh, i hope you have a great day god bless you